Well, it goes on from there, but like I say, you're probably not old enough to see the rest of this. It gets into all the kinds of things like circumcision, and Hagar comes into the picture, and that's a whole other story. And, um, but the kids love it anyway. But what a story anyway, the story of Abraham, which really in the Old Testament, other than Moses, Abraham takes up more room than any other person. Um, we, we start with, with him back in actually chapter 11. He's um, introduced as a son of Terah, or Terah, and uh, they live in a place called Ur, which is southeastern Iraq today, down um, in that direction. And they move up to Haran, which is southern Turkey, and there Terah dies, and then that's where Abram gets the call. He gets a call to go. Now, there's two calls in Abram's life. The first call is to follow the one true God, and, and we don't really get into that, uh, but I really believe that, that there's that first initial call. And then the second call is a very specific call, and that is to go to Canaan. And that's uh, where Abram heads off to, and where ultimately all these other wonderful parts of the story come together. Um, there's a story about how, Ab well, we've already seen the one about Egypt. And then there's a story about Abram and Lot, his nephew, how they have to split the land, and Lot goes down into the valley, and then um, eventually Lot is, is uh, captured by some kings and taken away, and Abram goes and rescues him and brings him back and meets this wonderful, mysterious character called Melchizedek. And um, then later we get the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah in the middle of that, and then, then comes the story of Hagar and Ishmael. Well, you got to go home and read all this stuff. I mean, it's really great. And then, then, then finally comes the story about Isaac, how Isaac is born to them, the, the child of promise, who was finally born of Sarah, long past her childbearing years. And uh, then there's that story that we all remember from Sunday school about God saying to Abraham to take Isaac up and sacrifice him, and, and Abraham does, and then at the last minute, uh, God says, no, stop, you know, and all that. So, great, great story. But did you also know that Abraham also continues on into the New Testament? Uh, there's some great things in the New Testament about Abraham. Uh, Hebrews 11th chapter starts getting into this talk about faith, and it lifts up Abraham as, as the, the, the great example of faith. Uh, so you can read that one. He, uh, Hebrews the 11th chapter about Abraham and his faith. And then there's Paul who uses Abraham also in Romans, the fourth chapter, he begins to talk about the faith of Abraham. Reminding us that Abraham came many, many years before Moses. And there was no law until Moses. So Abraham lived before there was the law. And so Paul goes on to talk about uh, the example of Abraham in the fourth chapter of Romans. About the fact that his life was based on faith. Not on the works that he did, but on the faith that he had in God and in God's call in his life. And then Paul continues to, to elaborate this theology and, and talks about the fact that the true children of Abraham are not the children of the flesh, but the children of the spirit, the people who have faith. That, that in a sense, all of us who live by faith are children of Abraham. That you can be a physical child of Abraham and not have faith. The true children are the ones who have faith. So Abraham becomes this great example in the Old Testament, which we oftentimes think of as a time of, of laws and all these various laws that they had to follow that. But Abraham becomes a wonderful example of faith, of what it means to have faith and what it means to walk by faith. Now, as I mentioned, there were two calls in Abraham's life. There are two calls in all of our lives. The first call is a generic call. The first call is a call that God gives to all people. And it's a very simple call. Come, follow me. Jesus gave that call to Peter and Andrew. He said, leave behind you the nets and the fishing boats and come follow me. To James and John. To Matthew, he said, leave behind the, the tax collector's booth and come follow me. This, I believe, as I mentioned, is a generic call that goes to all people. And by the way, as, as people who live in the Wesleyan tradition... We truly believe that God calls all people. Sometimes people say to me, well, you know, we all believe the same thing. Not necessarily so. There are those who believe that it's already been predestined who God is calling and who God is not called. We do not believe that. We believe that the call goes to everyone. For God so loved the whole world, he gave his son Jesus Christ, that every one of us 
has that call upon us. And that call is, come and follow me. Jesus says, come and follow me. And um, whether we respond in a positive way or not, uh, we respond one way or another. If we don't say yes to Jesus, then we're saying no. And what Jesus is asking of all of us, as he asked of Abram in this you know, really uh, unbelievable way, is to, to Abram, he said, I want you to leave everything you know. I want you to leave everything back here in Haran. And I want you to go forward, trusting in me, that I will take you to a place that will be a blessing to you. And that's God's promise to all of us. God says, leave behind you the world, leave behind the idols, whatever your idols may be, leave behind your idols, follow me, and I will take you to a place where you will be blessed. And so Abram took off, and, and um, you know, it's just hard to imagine what it must have been like. And I can imagine that conversation that they alluded to between he and Sarai, his wife. <laughs> We're just going to go off, um, we're just going to pack the, the, the van with everything we can get into it. We're going to sell everything else, and we're going to drive down the road until God tells us to stop. And then we're going to stop, and then we're going to see what God has for us to step. I mean, it's just unbelievable that, that, that Abraham took that first step of faith, and yet he was willing to step out in faith to follow that second call of God. Now, the second call of God isn't a general call. It's a very specific call that certain individuals receive. You may have received a call from God. I don't know. I'm not saying that every person does. I received a call from God. First call, again, was to follow Jesus. And I made that commitment when I was 21 years old. But along with that came another call to go into the ministry. Now, that's, another, that's kind of a specific goal or call that God gives. Maybe you received a specific call, a call to marry a certain person or to take up a certain profession or to live a certain lifestyle. I'm not sure what that might be in your life. But, and how we hear that call? How did Abraham hear that call? It's interesting that in there, there's no indication of how that came. It just says that God spoke to Abraham. That God spoke to Abraham. And, and I believe God spoke to me in a very specific way, but if people asked me to explain it, I could not explain it to you. But Abraham took that second call, very specific call, and he moved forward. Now, he, he, let, let's face it, as, as the little reform uh, cartoon shared with us, he had his doubts. When he got to Egypt, it says, you know, he wasn't quite sure that he could trust God fully, so he made up that story about Sarah being his sister, which she partly kind of was. So he wasn't totally lying, but he kind of stretched the truth a little bit. Because uh, he just didn't have enough faith. And, and, and that's true, that as we step out to follow, sometimes... Our faith can be somewhat weak. Um, there were times in my life when I, as I tried to follow and um, step forward to follow the call of God to, become, to go into ministry, that there were times, especially first year seminary, uh, and other times when I wondered, is that really what God is calling me to do? But you step out in faith, and, and, and you just keep moving forward. You just keep going forward and say, you just trust. And along the way, what happened with Abraham is along the way, God continued to show him that God was that this call was true and that God was blessing him. And by the time Abraham was ready to go, to die, he could look back on a life and look back and say, you know, now I can see. Now I can see that what God said was true. Couldn't always see it along the way. Couldn't quite understand it along the way. But now that I'm looking back, I can see where my faith brought me to this point today and where God was true to me. I can see now where yeah, Isaac did, was born. There was a time when I didn't know that I'd ever have a son. But now I look back on it, I can see that God promised me a son and God delivered. God was with me. You see, the, the, the point of the story to me is that when we're along on the journey of faith, it takes faith. Because we don't always see the evidence that God is really working in our lives. I can look back now after 39 years of parish ministry and say, yeah, you know what? It's been confirmed. It's been confirmed that this was the right path. That this is where God wanted me to be. Some of you older folks, you can probably look back on your path and say, you know, where, I, where I've been, that's where God wanted me to be. I can see that now. But while we're in the midst of it, it's hard sometimes to see that. It's hard to keep the faith. And so we, we, we look at Abraham as an example of someone who stepped out in faith, maybe sometimes had his doubts, 
But he continued to move forward in faith, trusting God, believing in God, and ultimately could look back on a life that was well served as he trusted and obeyed God. We're going to sing that hymn in just a few moments, Trust and Obey. And that's what it's really all about. That was the life of Abraham. He put his faith in God. He trusted God. He obeyed God. And God was able to do marvelous things through him. God calls us today to follow him, to trust him, to obey him. And God will do great things through us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful example of Abraham who taught us what it means to have faith, to trust, and to go forward in obedience. Help us, Lord, as we continue our lives upon this earth, as we continue our journey. Help us to go forth in faith, trusting in you for all things, and believing in you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. We invite you now to stand as you are able and join in singing hymn number 467, Trust and Obey.